Glenn is the vice chair of the military ministry who gives tremendous support in all of our activities. And our own Ethan Zora Green, who is going to tell us about his career. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We're so glad to have everyone here. Um, for those of you who are still looking for a seat, there are one, two, three, four here in the front. So please do not feel like you have to stand and eat, find a seat, and don't hesitate to come on down. Our guest today is Staff Sergeant Ethan Zorak Green, who is a member of the Army Chorus and obviously a member of the United States Army. Who? And I am going to have a conversation with Ethan. This concept grew out of conversations that he and I have had over the last months or so as we have uh, been together in the praise band at the 845 service. And as we got to know one another, I'd say, hey, why did you decide to join the Army Chorus? And hey, what it made you go into music? And we thought we would just kind of recreate some of that conversation um, here today. So again, uh, Ethan Zorak Green is our guest today. He uh, was is from Hamlet, North Carolina. He went to uh, undergraduate school at Wingate University where he received a bachelor's degree in vocal performance. He then uh, received a master's degree at the University of Maryland uh, a master's degree in opera performance and has focused a good deal of his career on opera. Uh, then he's been in the Army Corps since 2019. Uh, those of you who are at 11 o'clock service know that he is in the uh, choir here at church. Those of you who are 845 service may know that he is in the praise band. And so I think you can already see uh, that whether it's opera or traditional uh, Choral music or uh, rock and roll Christian music. Uh, Ethan is multi talented and can do just about anything. So, Ethan, uh, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. So, let me ask you this question Did you always know that you wanted a career in music? I did not always know I wanted a career in music. Um, I've always loved music. My family is very musical, so I always sang in church growing up and uh, in school. But um, I, I didn't have the vocal stamina when I was young. I think it was because my pop, he coined me as the nickname um, Whiny Cat. Because <laughs> throughout my childhood, I cried a lot. So my voice was often very raspy, um, which lent itself to, I had some good roles in middle school um, in musicals as Bill Sykes from Oliver Twist, a very angry role, and The Scrooge. Both things you didn't have to sound very good, you just had to yell. Um, but it took going into, um, you know, going through puberty and then also not being so much of a whiny cat, where I gained more vocal stamina and my Uncle Don um, found, he's also a musician, he, a musical educator, he found that I had talent and pushed me to go to school for music. So there is when I decided to pursue a career in music. Those of you who know, Ethan's wife, Joanna Zorak Green, is with us here today. And Joanna, did you know he was called Whiny Cat when he was? <laughs> I am familiar. <laughs> Maybe sometimes I'm still a whiny cat. I don't know. I don't know. So what kind of music were you performing before you came into the Army? Before I came into the Army, um, you just heard I got my master's in opera. So um, that's where I met Joanna, my wife, uh, at the University of Maryland. Uh, so I was pursuing an opera career you know, five or six years before joining the, op the Army, where I would go and do summer festivals. Um, I went to Central City, Colorado once, Des Moines, Iowa, different areas. Um, it was really during the summer, and then I would do roles around town. Um, and then I just found that that was, you know, it was draining on a relationship. Um, being gone for months at a time from your spouse. And funny enough, um, Michael Ford here at church, uh, the late Michael Ford, uh, who was a member of the Army Chorus, encouraged me to audition for the Army Chorus. And it's strange because the Army Chorus, the band, you don't move around, you're stationed permanently. And that's different from the rest of the army, obviously, or the rest of the military, where you moved around every few years or so. Um, so it was the stability 
of the Army job that drew me in and made me want to take a shift from pursuing opera to be more family focused, more stability. So you were in the MPC choir before you joined the Army? I, yes, that's correct. And did, um, how did that come to be? Oh, uh, I was singing at the Basoka over in Northeast DC for a few years, but Joanna uh, asked Mike if he wanted to hear me sing because she wanted to bring her boyfriend into the church. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's how that came about. Mike listened to me sing, and I guess he thought I was okay enough to bring on, and that's what started me here about eight years ago. I've had the chance to talk to Mike about Ethan's audition for the position, and Mike said that Joanna had said, I've been dating this guy, and I'd like to have him come be in the choir, and would you, would you audition him? And Mike said, oh, sure, you know, I'll be happy to. And Ethan rolls in. And Mike sits down and, and Ethan stands up and opens and Mike just went. <laughs> his eyes get wide and his mouth, his jaw dropped because um, out of Ethan came this fabulous voice. And if you, um, I hope you've had a chance to see uh, Ethan this last year in uh, Messiah. If you weren't here for Messiah, you should go online and watch the recording of Messiah. And the part where they get to Ethan, his first solo, it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. This is what Handel had in mind. Uh, so, what's the audition like to uh, get into the Army course? So the audition, uh, you have to submit a tape or a YouTube video of a few songs and then if you get through that first preliminary round, they'll bring you in and I think the first round you usually sing a song, an aria, and uh, there will be a sight reading and then after that first round they take everybody into a room and they just call out the names of who they want to hear again. And then second time, you the second round, they'll hear you sing another song, you'll sing with the ensemble. Uh, and then if they still like you after that, they'll bring in the commander if he's available um, and you'll have an interview. And after all that is said and done, if they like you, uh, they'll offer you the job. And what's the part when they tell you that coming with the job is an all expense paid trip to basic training? <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckily, you know that going into it. Okay. So before you, uh, before you apply, if you read the audition notice, <laughs> you know that that's part of it. It's a good test to see if you have you're read right. the material. If you're going through it all. Mm -hmm. Some people here may not know that um, every member of the Army Corps, every member of the Army Band is a real soldier. They have gone to basic training. And uh, so, where did you go to basic training? I went to basic training at uh, Fort Leonard Wood. Fort Leonard Wood. Yes. And uh, was, I assume it was not just the musician branch of the basic training? It was training? not, yeah, it was just the regular, whoever has signed up, you're in, you're gone, you're, you're there. Were your, were your buddies surprised that some guy from the course was in the basic training? Uh, well, I, I tried not to mention that I was there for that, <laughs> that I was a singer. Luckily no one asked. I, I know some other people that are in the course let that out of the bag at the very beginning and then they were just made by the drill sergeants to sing at every opportunity. <laughs> they didn't find out that I was going into the course until the very end and then the last two weeks I think and I had to sing the national anthem almost every two hours. <laughs> so I'm glad I waited. It may be better than dropping and doing push-ups so you get to sing instead of Perhaps, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so I know that um, the Army course is traditionally group, uh, comprised of enlisted soldiers. Is that still the case? That's correct. And how's the rank structure work for the course? So for the course, um, Going into basic training, you start as an E4 specialist, and once you get through basic training, you get to the unit. Um, two or three months go by, and then you are given the rank of uh, E6 staff sergeant, um, and then obviously promotable up to sergeant major from there. But every member of the chorus is Everyone just an enlisted soldier. Correct. Everyone in the chorus, in the band, um, it's only the the conductors that are the officers. So this is probably the most well-educated group of enlisted soldiers you're ever going to find. <laughs> That's I assume probably true. I mean, most, people most, have most, of them have, uh, most of them do have master's degrees. 
Mm -hmm. Some doctorates. Whoa, that's amazing. Not me. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so, uh, do you all still do PT test and range call and all that sort of we thing? Do, we, uh, we do the ACFT um, twice a year, uh, but we do not have to do the range call. That, when that went away, I'm not sure, but someone told me that was because the Army band started to outshoot the old guard. I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. When you think of the new ACFT, for those of you, the oh, new yeah. PT test, it went from three events to seven uh -huh. or eight, and yeah. um, I had to do it once or twice before I retired, and um, it's really hard. <laughs> it is. A lot more elements than just push up, sit up, run. Uh, but I enjoy it. I'm, I've always enjoyed um, weightlifting and such, so I like the deadlift. Uh, Spread drag carry is the one that's, that really wears you out. So you're out there leading the way? Army course leads the way. Maybe that's a motto that you. I don't know if I'm leading, but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying so to complete. <laughs> what's a typical army day then for someone in the course? Oh, okay. Um, typically Monday through Friday, uh, the course rehearses from 10:30 to 12:30, and then if you have a mission, say if you have uh, individuals, we get called out all the time uh, to see an anthem for ceremonies <coughs> at instead of Pentagon or just somewhere around town in government buildings for promotions or whatever they might need an anthem singer for. Uh, and then small ensembles, uh, we'll do concerts here and there. Um, we'll sing a soloist with a concert band or as a chorus with a concert band. So it's really, it's really a mixed bag of um, things that we're drawn into and the numbers uh, at individual times. So there's almost no typical day. There's no typical day. What the only thing we know that is typical is that we're most likely going to have a rehearsal 10.30, 12.30 for full chorus. Then whatever else comes along. And are there other singing groups besides the full chorus? Uh, there in are. That, in that structure there are. of the Army Band? There, there, the group I was originally in, actually, um, the Army Voices, uh, which was four females, four males, we did more acapella, pop, um, musical theater. Uh, we were recently, a couple years ago, absorbed into the Army Chorus because, I don't know if you mostly know that the Army Chorus was all men for the longest time, but now we've created a, it's a mixed ensemble. So we're hiring a bunch of females. We, we've hired a bunch of females. We're still looking for some altos. Jerry. <laughs> um, I remember it's that three months of Fort Leonard package right. that uh, comes along. <laughs> Gotta be, yeah, exactly. Um, I thought I'd ask you some questions about the big events that we here in Washington see. So all of us are familiar with seeing Memorial Day or Veterans Day on uh, television. Perhaps we've been there at Arlington Cemetery to see that ceremony in the amphitheater, and there's always a musical aspect to that. Um, so I'd like to talk a bit more about that. Um, what's the chorus like that performs at those events? Is it a particular service, or is it multiple services? Is it a joint aspect, joint mission? How's that work? It's, it's typically a joint mission from my experience. Um, the different courses, like the sea chanters from the Navy, singing sergeants from the Air Force, vocalists from the Marine Band, they only have two vocalists. Um, a mixture of us will come together for those events, and then the band itself is usually a different one each for each event. It's not a joint. It's band. not a joint. The, the chorus is joint, but then the band itself is not. And how often do you rehearse with that band, or is it just the day of? It's uh, with the band's day of, yeah. and. So our individual choruses will rehearse the music, um, and then we won't ever re rehearse that as a joint chorus. That'll be day of. And so how early do you have to be there for the 11 o'clock service on those days? It's usually pretty early, a couple of hours before at least. Are these pieces of music that you're performing something that's in every chorus in the repertoire, and so no matter where you're coming from, you know it? or? It are the people who are going to be in the joint chorus given this extra music? Here's the 
Veterans Day music. Here's the Memorial Day music on top of what you're normally working on. It's an added piece, so typically it's something new that we haven't seen before. Um, and we'll rehearse that just in addition with our regular repertoire. Is Veterans Day sort of the same thing as Memorial Day? Same approach? Yeah, pretty much. Chorus and music might be a little different, I suppose, between Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Let me, yeah. The music would be a little different. Temperature's a little bit different between yeah. Veterans yes. Day and Memorial Day. Indeed. Now, um, Indeed. you're always there in the blues, but I never see Correct. you all wearing uh, the overcoats. So are you, you give us a little inside Army baseball here. Are you got a couple of extra layers underneath, got the long johns on, on the if, blues? If it's cold, oh yeah. You'll put whatever you can underneath to stay warm, the waffle tops, all those things. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so how do you how do you get to the event? Do you drive into the ceremony? Do you march into the ceremony? How does that work? So we we'll typically we'll meet at the band building and um, we'll just be bussed in all together. And so where is the band's building? I didn't ask you that when you were talking about rehearsing. Where does uh, the band and the chorus rehearse? Uh, we rehearse everyone. The whole band, the whole unit is in a building at Fort Myer, one band building. It's, Hall. It's, the, it's across from the back entrance to Arlington Cemetery, I think. Correct. And sort of a slanted mm -hmm. roof. Very close. It was very easy for the ceremonial band to march right in and do a funeral. You know, so if you're parked there at the old chapel on Old Post Chapel at Arlington, or at Fort Myer. Right, it's just direct right across the street. Right in front of you. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, from talking with Ethan that um, one of the interesting aspects, interesting to me, of what the musical groups do is the planning for funerals here in Washington. And all of us who are from Washington know that uh, not infrequently there are uh, funerals of important people that happen, uh, often at the National Cathedral. And um, Ethan had mentioned to me that um, he was involved in the preparation uh, for that. So I wanted to ask you um, how that works. Is it, so I want to contrast that with Veterans Day Memorial Day. Is it again um, a standing group, or how does how does the choir form for the funeral of? Let's just take as an example: if a president were to die, how does that work? Sure. Um, so we rehearse about two times a year. Um, all the choruses will join together to rehearse music for whichever president has picked out music. Um, we'll do a combination of different president's selections. Um, so does that mean that every president has a selection? Every former president has correct. a selection? I think, I think it's one of the first things they do is decide what music they will, would want at their funeral. The first thing they do as president is to begin planning for events. That's my understanding. I think I've got that right. Well, all of you who've been in the military know that you have to plan ahead. It's always good to be prepared. Yeah. Uh, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Yeah. Uh, it's good to have a battle plan. Uh, right. This is no exception, apparently, to that. So then there's a package, so to, so to speak, of this is this president's music and this is this president's music, and you're working those up. Correct. Just to have them ready to go. Correct. <laughs> and so you say so you practice it a couple times a year. Uh, where do you practice it? Uh, we rehearse usually at the Marine Barracks because their band, the president's own, is the band that is used for the service. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these services are at National Cathedral. Do you ever get a chance to uh, practice in that space. I presume that the acoustics in the National Cathedral are not quite the same as the band hall at, oh, at the yeah. Marine Barracks. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, every now and then, from time to time, we will. Not often, but sometimes we'll rehearse in the cathedral. When you do that, is it just the musical groups, or are you also rehearsing with all the other participants in the service, such as the body team and the, and the, uh, the honor guard? Um, it's usually just the band. So when we see that on television, it all come together, it's really just serendipity that it, and I'm sure they're planning, that it all comes together. Correct. Uh, I'm, and I'm sure there's, I've never been a part of a funeral yet, but um, I'm sure there's some quick rehearsals prior to that. I, um, I know that you did have the opportunity to participate in the funeral of 
uh, somebody very important and somebody very well known to our church uh, not too long ago. You sang at a memorial service for Senator Bob Dole, a member of our congregation. Um, in fact, uh, you and Joanna performed together at that event uh, in the Capitol Rotunda. So tell us how that came about. That came about, I believe, when I spoke with Elizabeth Dole, that she said her and Bob Dole had been to a concert um, at NPC and heard me sing in one of the, I don't know if it was a Palm Sunday or a Messiah, but I think at that time they had decided that they wanted to use me in some capacity. Um, so after Bob Dole passed away, uh, Mike Denham actually called me because he was singing um, the service at the National Cathedral and he had been speaking with Elizabeth Dole and asked me if I would be interested or, you know, I was like, obviously it's a huge honor. Um, so that's what got us. And I, actually after that, um, oh, and Joanna made up the arrangement to, great is thy faithfulness for that. That was really great. And, um, sorry, and then after that we actually, Elizabeth Dole called and asked if we would also sing the service on base at Fort Myer that they had there after, and that was maybe a month or two after the Capitol Rotunda. And what did you sing at that service? At that, um, <coughs> I know it. Do you remember the? The Dvorak. The Dvorak. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Obviously, I know what it was. I just slipped in my mind now. We went over some of these questions in advance. That's one we didn't go over. So, uh, but back to the Rotunda. Oh, going home. Going Sorry, home. going home. Um, was the plan always that Joanna would be your accompanist for that piece in the rotunda? Um, it, was, it was a request from the Dolls as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Joanna, were you playing on an upright? Oh yeah, they wheeled it up, yeah. a dinky <laughs> upright, and I hammered it as hard as I could. <laughs> I remember uh, watching it on television, and um, of course those of you who have seen it, or seen something like it, where the body is lying in repose, and all the senators and congressmen come in and presidents, Supreme Court justices, and they all gather around. And I remember looking over and seeing you playing and that Joanna was playing an, an upright piano. And for people who are serious pianists, upright pianos strike terror in their heart because <laughs> you just never know if it's going to be in tune or if, and there's only a little tiny opening in the lid so the music the sound doesn't always come out like it does on a grand. Uh, did you know that you were going to have it upright and, until you no, walked in? No, I had no idea that sort of piano was going to be in there until it happened. I remember, I remember Elizabeth Dole saying that she was going to try to get the best thing they had. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was the best thing that they had for some reason. So. I'm sure that grand yeah. pianos aren't just sort of hanging out in the capital of the public and always ready to go. How right, often right. did you get to practice that in that space before? Because the acoustics we, there are really different. Very the National Cathedral or the Marine Barracks, I'm sure. Very different. Uh, we did we did run it once in the in the rotunda. And then prior. when the room was full of people, did it sound and feel different? It did sound and feel different, uh, probably. But I think with the adrenaline and the <laughs> of the moment, I just kind of walked in and sang it. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, but I had seen it. It was a fabulous performance okay. and a very moving. You guys, both of you, were just incredible. And it was one of the highlights of the event. For me, uh, emotional highlights of the event was to hear you sing that very old, old hymn that all Presbyterians know. And uh, it, was, it was just a great thing. So we're talking about what um, things that are memorable to me. Let me ask you, what's your most memorable performance? Let's keep it in the Army context. In the Army context. Well, I have to say, other than, other than the seeing the, the Capitol Rotunda. It, maybe that was it? I mean, that definitely, I would say, is the most memorable to date. Um, yeah. Anything come close to it? No, definitely not. <laughs> you know, I was remarking, uh, we were talking about this, and I was thinking about just how many important people were in that room. I, I think the president, the president was there, and the vice president, vice president, members of the cabinet, and of course the Leaders of the House and Senate, both Republican and Democrat, were there. Lots mm -hmm. of congressmen, and senators. So, um, I just presu I presume that you have had a chance to meet a lot of important people. So, who have you met that you think is really impressive? Uh, 
<laughs> well, I have to start with uh, Colonel Gwen Schmidt. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. Do, you, do you get to meet uh, these important people when you're at these events? I. A lot of them are so. The chorus or a soloist were brought in to do the mission to provide the music, um, and we'll shake hands with those people. But I personally haven't had like in-depth conversations um, with any of them. So it's really we're going in, we're doing our job um, as we're an army musician, provide the music for whatever event um, we're needed in. And you, you refer to it as a mission. That's the issue, right? Uh, it, it felt strange to me at first, too, but. It's not a gig. That's really the language. It's not a <laughs> performance. No, really. yeah, to, yeah, to put it in the army context. Army. It's, yes. a, it's a mission, no matter uh, what your MOS is. The mission of is. going to sing the Beach Boys at a summer <laughs> festival. <laughs> that's what it is. The Beach Boys probably get a kick out of knowing that their music is now part of the mission at times. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Maybe so, yeah, I'm sure. It was great stuff. <laughs> Well, I want to give opportunity for you folks to ask uh, questions of Ethan. I'll try to uh, direct traffic here, and um, if, I'll probably repeat your question for the people at home who are watching. So, uh, who would like to ask Ethan a question? Let's go right here. Do you know what the president has picked up what music, or is it all kind of grouped together? The question for people at home is, uh, do you know what president has picked each music. So when you're performing, when you're rehearsing the music for a funeral, do you know whose funeral it would be? <laughs> right. Um, I'm trying to remember if they specify. I have another Army Corps member here. That he can. Well, um, we're uh, so we'll find out who is uh, likely. <laughs> we can't. We can't say. Obviously, we can't say who that is or anything like that. But we'll rehearse for that person, so we will get specific music for that. So yes, person. yeah. In in circumstances Thank such you. as that, we will get. We will know who the music is for. It's close. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. They so, say don't share anything. Right here. How long do you serve for? Do you re up every couple oh, of years? Should have asked that question. How long is your enlistment? Oh, true. It's a uh, four year enlistment, and then. Um, we re-up every, we're allowed to re-up for either two years up to six, yeah. I think. Something like that. Yeah. Jenny? Yeah, I love opera, and I was impressed by your opera. You started out as, with opera training. I did. So do you have any desire to sing opera? Do you ever sing opera at, at any other venue? Um, I did. Sometimes I do. I, I will sing in the chorus for Washington National Opera every time, every now and then when I have the time. It's very time consuming, so it has to be specific. Um, or I'll do. Uh, I'll sing the chorus for Washington Concert Opera stuff in the area. But uh, as far as doing roles, you have to put in a lot of leave for that. So and it, before you I'm not sure. the army, did you ever sing an opera role? Oh, sorry. Yes, before joining the army, I did. Um, I did. A, a lot of various roles, just you know, the bass repertoire. Do you prefer Italian, German, or English? <laughs> um, I would say English because I speak English, and I was a, never great at studying and understanding the la other languages. Uh, I could pronounce them great and make you think I knew what I was saying. But, uh, it must be harder to memorize the role when it's in a foreign language. Um, I don't know. I would. I don't think so, actually. I don't know why. Mm. Interesting. Um, question: So, uh, if some of the Army Corps goes off to Afghanistan or Iraq and fight and stuff, do you do, do, you do uh, different things? They, I mean, do you sing there? It seems a weird. I mean, do you actually do the same thing soldiers do, or something else? The question is: If a member of the Corps were to be deployed to Afghanistan or Iraq, um, would they do musical things while they're gone, or would they do more traditional uh, war fighting functions while they're gone? I know that some members of the Army Chorus um, and Army Voices, they were, they were, they did go over um, to Afghanistan or somewhere, and I believe mostly just in the capacity to um, provide music and entertainment. A little levity. I'm sure that um, 
everyone who's deployed is expected to deploy within their military occupational specialty. If you're a cook, you're a cook. If you're infantry, you're infantry. If you're artillery, you're artillery. And if you're a musician, that's what you do. And so they Correct. select people based on what their skill is. What is your numerical designation, what's your MOS? Uh, 42 Sierra. A 42 Sierra. Yes. Other questions? What does that mean? 42 Sierra is, it means he's a band musician. Band musician. Yeah. Yeah. What freedom does the Army give you in seeing other places and seeing, widening your scene career while you're in the question is how much freedom does the Army give you to sing other places and to broaden your musical horizons? It's a good question. They give you a lot of, um, they're very supportive of you still maintaining um, um, your music career in whatever capacity you want to, um, as long as it doesn't impede on um, obviously your, job. your job in the military. That's the main focus, but we still do have a lot of opportunities to do musical things outside of the Army. That's why you'd have to take leave if you were in an opera for a performance and it happens to be on a day where it's an Army day, you have, to, you have to take leave in order to go do that. And not many opera companies are okay with you saying, well, they, I might show up to this opera, I might not. <laughs> <laughs> frown on that. They, they frown. Sort of, yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm curious, though, see, I don't think the government even, so uh, your course of put on a big performance when there's the uh, Army versus Navy football. Does the course perform at the Army Navy game? I don't know that they ever have. They at least haven't since I've been in. Um, we we do perform from time to time at different games, like in, in the NFL games, or we we sing at the Nat Stadium a lot because it's nearby or the Capitals. Uh, but I'm not sure about that specific game. Howard, thank you for your interesting comments. So we're talking about the flexibility that the Army provides uh, you know, for the singers and such. So I'm curious, how does that flexibility help you in terms of being a parent? Do uh, you find it's, it's more flexibility in being a regular soldier, or, or how do you see it? Thank you. Does the flexibility of being a musician help you be have more time at home over someone whose job in the Army is less flexible in terms of time? Um, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Let's, why don't we ask, you can ask Finley, who is also Finley in attendance to here today. <laughs> Finley is somewhat quiet today. She's been very good for this uh, event. Um, if you don't have to have rehearsal until 10.30, does that mean you can do some more parenting stuff in the morning? Correct. Before you Correct. Have to show up? So I can help out in the morning if mom wants to go do a gym workout before I go to work or something. Uh, and then I can, uh, if I'm, if I'm not scheduled for any events in the evening, um, I can spend time with Finley and Joanna can work in whatever capacity and you know, babysitter is needed. One of the benefits of military service now is the expanded parental leave that oh, both, that's amazing. Uh, mothers and fathers get. And I think you were able to use parental leave. I was, yeah. Was 12 weeks. 12 weeks paid leave for uh, child care, which is somewhat new and yeah. what a fabulous opportunity that is for you to be home with her. That it is. Uh, Clyde, I think, had a question. I was curious whether or not you crossed paths with Dolores Ziegler when you went to Maryland University Conservatory. Yes, I did. Yeah, I um, I had a few classes with Dolores Ziegler uh, during my time there. Um, great. Uh, I took German diction with her. Second question: uh, When we were at the tattoo in uh, Edinburgh, mm. we saw two units from the U.S. Army. One was a drill team, drill team, and the other was a musical group. I'm curious whether or not the your chorus ever goes there. It's a two-week commitment. Uh, I'm not aware that we're involved in that. It's a musical group from around the world that, that participated in it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe so. I was wondering uh, if you can be a career, if you're a career army person, can you be in the chorus the whole time? The question is if you choose to make the army a career, can you stay in the chorus the whole time? That we can. Mm -hmm. That, and that's usually how it goes. Um, well, you had mentioned six years. That's how, um, so if we, if we re-up, if we re-enlist, um, 
we're able to usually do that for two to six years, whatever your choice may be. So enlisted soldiers have uh, fixed commitments, um, four to begin with, I think, four to six, Correct. and then two or four or six or eight afterwards. Um, officers have an eight-year commitment that they begin with, and then after that, if they choose to stay there, it's open-ended, but enlisted soldiers have to commit to a specific period of time, for the most part, mm -hmm. um, throughout their career. And so as an enlisted soldier, uh, they all have fixed commitments that can be renewed. Right. Kathy? Area. The question is, does he travel outside the Washington, D.C. area for performances, or is it mostly in the DMV? It is mostly in the DMV. From time to time, we will uh, travel, but it's rare. Um, I think last year I only went to New York with the course for a few days. But sometimes, I mean, we might be going to Texas uh, later this year. Um, but it's, it's mostly in the DMV because we have an Army field band uh, at Fort Meade that travels half the year, 180 days out of the year. So our primary duty is music in the D.C. area. Uh, how come officers can't be, what if an officer wants to be in the choir? Why can't they be? Why can't an officer be in the choir? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, because that's the rule. I'm sure it has to do with uh, the structure that you want the everybody in the group to be uh, about the same rank, and you mm -hmm. have soldiers who do things and officers who make the decisions, and in this context, the people who do things are the people who sing, and those people are then by tradition and army doctrine. Enlisted soldiers and would have an impact on unit cohesion. Sorry? It would have oh. an impact on unit mm -hmm. cohesion. No doubt. Have an impact mm -hmm. on unit cohesion if you had some, of some officers <laughs> singing it. Yeah, in the back. Especially if the officer's yeah, sure. a little off key and you have to say, <laughs> hey, sir, you're a little flat on that last passage. Why don't you tune it up a little bit? Related to that, because you're so well educated, do you get any kind of specialty pay as a result of being? Uh, uh, is there specialty pay that comes with being in the Army Corps? There is, there's no specialty pay. Wow. It's not hazardous duty. <laughs> it's not. I know, like, you're so educated. Except for the <laughs> phlegm of your battle buddy <laughs> beside you. I agree with you. I, when I, I was always amazed that people with this kind of talent, with masters and PhDs, are drawn enlisted pay. And I, frankly, I'm amazed that then you can retain people That's for that issue. long. Right. And I know that many people stay in the course for years and years and years, so they love they the do. work, and mm -hmm. the money must be manageable. But yeah. do you think, uh, do other folks in the course, do you have a sense that the other folks have a lot of outside gigs that they're doing to supplement them? Um, they, oftentimes, um, people are working um, another job, or obviously like teaching music, or singing other gigs um, that don't conflict with our army mission, their duties. Like the well, NPC choir? Jenny like the NPC choir. Jenny is my commander, so she gets another question. One more question. Um, what's the most, Glenn and I were talking earlier about the highlights of our career. What's the, what's the highlight of you, the thing that was most exciting for you? I mean, apart from today's speaking. Apart from apart today. I'm sharing the stage with B. Um, as far as our, my army career? Anything. And singing. Oh, and singing. That's a hard one. I, I don't know if I have one on top of my head. Off the, mm. <laughs> Maybe with your wife. Oh, singing with my lovely wife. <laughs> uh, I mean, being able to sing with my wife in a great church family. And uh, in the White House? You sat at the White House? Oh, uh, I did during December. My first time um, seeing Christmas carols as uh, people exited the tour of the White House. It's Christmas. <laughs> Did you get to see the White House as part of the tour? Um, as part of the mission? Or they just stand here? A lot play? of the a lot of the back rooms 
that don't look very nice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of interesting. It was interesting, yes. Foundation. Uh, so last year, um, I know that the 82nd Air War Corps has got some notoriety of being on America's Got Talent. Uh, oh, yeah. Just, just wanted to hear your, your thoughts on that, whether or not your course has anything special planned. <laughs> so, um, that would be cool, wouldn't it? The question is about um, courses that belong to other parts of the Army. Uh, often there's a chorus at different um, divisions, and so the 82nd Airborne Division chorus was on America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, uh, did you guys get a shot at? Uh, I'm not aware of any. Or something like I'm not that. aware of anything uh, planned any, for any that. jealousy? Were there any rumblings in the? <laughs> not I, don't know, I don't know why these, you know, these paratrooper guys. Why they got to right. go on television? <laughs> uh, you guys didn't get to. There were a few members from uh, people that had had retired from the Army Corps, and one singer that was in uh, the Army Band Downrange, which is a rock and roll group that we have. They made it pretty far in uh, America's Got Talent a few years ago. So that was some sort of representation from the Army Band. <laughs> uh, they call themselves Voices of Service. I'm going to look at those. Um, let's go back in the back to someone who hasn't asked a question yet. Uh, other than uh, solo work, as a choral singer, what's your favorite choral work? What's your favorite choral work? Not a solo piece, but a but choral, a choral piece. piece. Mozart Requiem. Mozart Requiem, come out. It's, it's going to be up in March <laughs> at National Presbyterian Church. Um, yeah, these are hard questions to do with my favorites because I really can't pinpoint favorites. I know when I'm singing something, when, when, the, the, when the choir has just come together and getting that perfect harmony, the buzz in the room, uh, where you really just feel it and are engaged, I think I would level that much higher than um, just what is like the best composition. I don't know if that's a good answer. It's a good answer. Um, so what is the top rank you could acquire, and who's the principal or secondary conductors of the group? Uh, what's the top rank that uh, you can achieve? and um, who's the secondary conductor of the group? So we can maybe expand on that. Mm -hmm. And who's the, the sort of, the, is there somebody who's the lead conductor of the chorus? And um, how's that interact with the band? So what's the highest rank okay. you can get to? Um, so we're, we're able to go up to E9. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and then you can, usually they pull the Command Sergeant Major for the band out of um, the sergeant major groups mm -hmm. of the army band. So the commander of the army band is a O six. Correct. Think. And mm -hmm. is there a, are there is there a second in command? Is that a lower ranking officer? Is there a warrant in there someplace? Um, yes, second command usually like a lieutenant colonel. Um, there's a warrant officer usually, and um, they are usually over the um, the pop groups. So like the army, the army blues and the army downrange. So when you all get together to rehearse, um, is it the conductor of the army band who's rehearsing you, or is there someone who's more of a vocal specialist, or an expert in vocal conducting, who's rehearsing your group? So since we get a new officer that is over the chorus every few years, um, they don't necessarily have experience in choral conducting. A lot of times, their main background is instrumentals and um, they've tried recently to have conductors that do have more experience. Um, right now we have uh, Captain Bonnie Alger who went to University of Maryland with me. Uh, she was getting her doctorate in conducting there at the time. Um, so she's there now with the chorus. She's the first female conductor of the Army Chorus. Um, I don't know where else I'm going with that. Oh, I think that's the answer to the question. Well, that is interesting. Um, not only is now the chorus a mixed chorus, but now the chorus, probably for the first time, has a commanding officer who is a female officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gene. You used to, um, the Army Corps used to do concerts here. Why don't they do that anymore? Will the Army Corps be doing a concert here at National again? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to wonder if. Um, that all depends if national requests 
our chorus. And when they request the chorus, if the availability works out. So perhaps they've um, requested us in the past and it just hasn't worked out in the past few years. I think it probably, like probably. fell away a little bit during pandemic time when mm -hmm. we just didn't have people here and maybe it just hasn't happened. The 10th anniversary chorus was here last. And I had seen it 10 years before. So that'll, that'll possibly be here again. That's a wonderful chorus. That's, that's a great night. I would encourage all of you to find an elder and say to that person, <laughs> Let's get the Army course here for a performance, and uh, yeah. your elected representatives will probably make that happen. <laughs> Other questions? Um, oh, uh, how many people are in the Army course? Uh, I believe we're slotted for 32 members. Um, that's currently, we're still uh, balancing the numbers out for hiring the female vocalists, but it's supposed to be at 32. Do you think there'll be a little breakout group of an all men's voices group as part of this? I mean, that, that particular style has the tradition. <laughs> we have a guest who's going to join us. Come on up. Thank Finley Zorak Green. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Finley Zorak Green. Do you think that there may be um, a men's chorus that is broken out for some performances? Um, or do you not see that the direction? I, I feel <laughs> like that could be a direction. Um, we're hopeful that we will start to do um, additional things. Like I know there's a group that wants to do barbershop, barbershop quartet. Mm -hmm. Uh, music and various other things, chamber music. Um, I think we're doing a chamber uh, concert sometime in March, I think. Somewhere. I don't even know where it is. Lafayette. No. Yes. And for folks who want to find about find out about upcoming Army Chorus performances, where uh, I think it's usarmyband.com, I believe, or just look up uh, Cursing Zone. And on the website, they have a calendar with all the upcoming events. And they're all free? Open to the public? They are. They're all free. Okay. So one more question, then we'll wrap. At the beginning of the program today, there was a discussion about piano. I think I have a amusing little story I can tell about that piano, assuming it's the same one. For several years, I was administrative assistant to the Sergeant at Irish in the Senate. And one of the things the Sergeant at Irish does is he owns the entire inventory of all the literature in the Capitol on the Senate side. One day, I got a phone call from a senator's wife wanting to know if we had a piano and if we were going to do a luncheon for the First Lady. And I'm like, I don't know. So I called the person who was in charge of all the literature and I said, do we have a piano? She said, let me get back. She called me back about 15 minutes later. Yes, we have one. Where is it? So I had somebody show it to me. We went down into the basement, into the bowels of the Senate part of the Capitol, moving draperies, boxes, and stuff like that. And there was this beautiful, brand new, Baldwin upright piano. And it had a plaque on it that says, a gift to the United States uh, from ASCAP. The American Society of Composers and Publishers. What is this piano doing out there? I went upstairs and told the sergeant at arms. He said, well, let's get it on up in our office. What I found out was that had been a gift to the United States Capitol, to the Senate, but the sergeant at arms at that time hated music. <laughs> and he had the thing literally buried. It was ostracized. Nobody would even fuck them. It was brand new. It's never been touched. So we brought it up, and I can't say for 100% sure that that's the piano, but that's the only one. That it might be it. Oh, that's very interesting. It had a little brass plaque on it. So if you played that piano, it did have the plaque. Plaque. Interesting little story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let me turn it back over to Ginny for any closing comments that she would like to make. I, I would love to ask you to sing, but I won't. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, 
We are so blessed to have you as part of our church family, and thank you for spending your afternoon with us. When thank I'm, you. Thank you and, for having me. Um, we, ha we always give an NPC challenge point, so here you go. Thank you so, so much for thank everything you. you do for the Army, for everything you do for our country, for everything you do for NPC. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give it a warm round.